everybody, this is Franco. This video is going to be about the MX210B 8x16 lathe that is commonly available on eBay. I recently decided to buy a manual lathe. Um, I actually wanted a little better lathe than this. I wanted to get something from Precision Matthews, but I don't have room for the lathes that they sell right now. They don't sell anything this small. The smallest machine they sell at Precision Matthews is a 10-inch lathe takes up more space on the workbench. I don't have that room right now. So I decided to go with something uh, maybe not quite as good. Did a little research. I decided to get one of these 8x16 lathes. And I actually bought what might be the cheapest one you could find on eBay. So let me tell you a little bit about it. This lathe was $898. That included shipping. So $898 lathe, tax, shipping, everything showed up. Uh, at my door, so pretty cheap. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit of the features when I do the pros and cons, but maybe uh, one thing worth mentioning is this lathe, um, it can do, as far as threading, it has eight different metric pitches and ten different uh, inch pitches. So if, if threading is really important to you, it probably is. You can see these are the eight different metric pitches and right here are the 10 different standard inch pitches. All right, so let's get into the pros and cons, and while I'm doing that, we'll also talk about the features. So first of all, the pros. Price, the thing was dirt cheap, uh, $898 shipped to my door. You can't beat that. Other things that are good about it, the manual is not terrible. It does have some useful information in it. It was actually a little bit better than I expected it to be. This, this lathe runs off 110 volts. That's really important if you're a hobbyist or you're running this in your garage or basement. A 110 volt uh, receptacle. I think I have 15 amp circuits in my garage. I've never had an issue. Uh, this lathe only weighs 140 pounds or somewhere roughly about around there. So it's really easy for two people to move this thing around. Um, Mrs. Franco helped me get this thing out of the crate and get it up on the workbench. So. Uh, She's a little, a little tougher than she looks, but the point is it's a nice light machine. It doesn't take too much effort to move this thing around. The other aspects here, what else? Yeah, okay, so it comes with the standard four position uh, tool post that you might see on a lot of these import lathes, but I was able to mount my, uh, I had an, an extra mini lathe quick change tool post laying around. So that thing fits on there without too much issue. The only uh, thing I had to do, this, this plate that goes underneath the uh, tool post, I had to modify it because uh, this compound has a boss on it that the tool post pivots on. So I just had to cut uh, that diameter in this plate and use it as a spacer between the quick change tool post and the compound. But you can purchase a mini lathe quick change tool post and it will fit on this lathe and it works pretty well. No plastic covers. So if you look all over this machine, there really are no plastic covers. Everything's metal. That's kind of nice. It has a lever locking uh, mechanism for the tailstock. So that's a little bit of a perk. A lot of these machines you have to lock the tailstock with a wrench. This has a, a mechanism with a lever locking action. This also has a carriage lock. So the, the seven inch mini lathes, they don't have a carriage lock, but this, this machine does. So you can lock that. This will lock the saddle. That's a really nice feature because when you're facing, if you can lock the saddle, you get a much better finish while you're facing. When you're not locked, uh, you get a little bit of movement and the finish is not as good. So we have a carriage lock. It's a nice plus for a machine this size. It's variable speed. We'll talk about that in a minute, but you can go anywhere from 50 to 2500 RPM depending on uh, the, the belt arrangement that you have. So right now I have it in the A position, so I'm early, well I think I do. We'll see when we turn it on, but 50 to 2500 RPM is what you get uh, variable speed. Another thing, this is really important, even though this lathe is cheap, it actually fits together pretty well. The saddle, the compound, all the slideways. Uh, I had to make a few adjustments to the Gibbs, but believe it or not, everything actually fits up pretty good. I, I was pleasantly surprised. 
And maybe the biggest feature, or the biggest pro, is this lathe has a inch and a half spindle bore. So most of these machines this size, the, the spindle bore is around three quarters of an inch or somewhere close to that. This has an inch and a half uh, opening through the spindle. So that's quite a bit bigger than, than most lathes, um, most benchtop lathes, even the 10 inch lathes. So quite a nice pro for this machine. Cons, well, first of all, uh, like most of these import lathes, it does not come with a uh, drill chuck, so you have to buy that separately. Uh, secondly, this thing was filthy, uh, and it stunk. So not only was it dirty, it smelled bad. Um, and I couldn't recognize the smell at first. It took me a little bit. To, I eventually thought about it. It smelled like mothballs. So whatever cave or dungeon or whatever place they're putting these things together in, there must be a uh, bug problem or something. So I'm picturing like a really dirty shop full of mothballs or some chemical. Uh, but it had that dirt on it and that odor, so you have to get all that stuff off. Uh, tailstock was not aligned. I had to mess with this thing to try to get it in alignment. It's still not perfect, but it's better than it was when it came out of the box. Control panel was not broken, but it was like pushed in. It was almost like someone grabbed a hold of it when they were putting it in the crate, so I had to take this off and straighten it all out, put it back together. Uh, this is a big one. It comes with metric dials. So a lot of guys don't like metric dials, but this, this came out of the crate with metric dials. Not a big deal. I think you can get used to that pretty quickly, but if that really bothers you, then you may not want to buy this lathe. Uh, like most lathes, it has, you know, the, these smaller import lathes don't have maybe quite as much uh, cross slide travel as maybe a bigger 10 inch lathe. The factory documentation says it has three inches of uh, travel. I, I actually think it has a little bit more than that, but um, according to their instructions, they, they say it has three inches of travel on the cross slide, two inches of travel on the compound. Um, it's typical for these smaller lathes. Get a bigger lathe, you'll get a little bit more uh, travel on the cross slide. Another thing, the uh, spindle, not terribly well balanced. It has a little bit of a vibration to it, depending at what, RP, what RPM you're working in. Um, I don't love that, but I can deal with it. The chuck didn't fit. When I took this thing out of the box, tried to put it together, the chuck did not fit onto the spindle very well. So I actually had to turn the little shoulder here on this plate to make the chuck fit a little bit better. I uh, was really surprised by that, but not a big deal. Just I would have expected that their chuck would fit their lathe without modifications, but we had to do that. Uh, now we'll get into what I think is some of the bigger problems or bigger cons with the lathe. It has a chart for threading. There's no chart for feed rate. When I looked at all the gears and all the combinations, the uh, slowest feed rate that I could come up with was six thou per rev. I could not put the gears in this machine in any combination that gave me less than six thou per rev feed rate, which is okay if you're roughing, but if you're running small tools with sharp tool nose radiuses, that's kind of a fast, aggressive feed rate. So that, in my opinion, was the biggest uh, con with the machine. The way that I got around that was to make a set of plastic gears on my 3D printer. And we can trade sides for a second. So if you look over here, there are plastic gears that I made on my 3D printer that allow me to get down to a feed rate of like one thou and eight tenths per rev, which is uh, a very slow feed rate, but if you're using small sharp tools, you can get a pretty good finish. So these were custom 3D printed gears that I made on my printer, and because I, because the gears are so big, they actually stick out beyond the front of the machine, I am modifying the cover. So I had to drill new holes in the cover. I'm going to have to elongate the uh, opening for the spindle, but what that lets me do is uh, mount the mount the cover in sort of an offset position to cover up the gears. So let's turn this thing on and check it out. I'll put my safety glasses on as soon as I find them. There they are on my head. So here we go.
So that's what it sounds like while it's running. Right around there is where it has the worst, worst vibrations. It's not terrible, but it's not good. Once they get around 1200, they go away. And yeah, now I can get a super, super slow feed rate. So we can take a few cuts with this thing. If you want to trade sides with me again. Maybe zoom in right here. Um, we crank this thing up to maximum RPM. Well, for this range, we're at 1500 RPM right now. lock the carriage, just manually take a little face cut, As you can see that's pretty good, and we're in aluminum also by the way if you haven't noticed, so come over here, we'll Take a little bit of a deeper cut. Well, that's not that deep. Take something a little more aggressive here. So this is half a millimeter. Oh. Half a millimeter. So that's about 20 thou. Not really a heavy cut, but gives you the idea. Break an edge. There you go. So you can see, fairly good finish in aluminum. Nothing, you know, too difficult here to cut, but. Uh, so I do a little bit more of a demo with the machine, but I'm having phone issues and uh, my phone is overheating So I don't want to make this video any longer, but there you go. There's the MX 210 V 8 by 16 lathe Available on eBay Would I buy it again? Eh, I don't know uh, But at least now with the plastic gears and everything it's it's serviceable. It'll do the job All right. Well, thanks for watching Have a great day